I'm Marjorie Block, President of the Sawgrass Historical Society. I'm at the Kirsten House today, and I'm with my good friend Sadie Nelson. Welcome, Sadie. Thank you. And Sadie's going to tell us a little bit about her family, which goes back to 1710 in Sawgrass. Uh, actually, my family migrated to Sorgates at a much later date. We started off in the area of Lake Mohawk, uh, which is between New Paltz and Kingston. Uh, they also were in the Binney Water area. Uh, the earliest records of the Stokeses uh, that were recorded was in 1738 when Richard Stokes married Margaret Schaefer, and they had two sons, John and Richard, who both fought in the Revolutionary War. A uh, little closer to modern time, John F. Stokes owned the property that was bought by the Smileys, which became Lake Mohawk as people know it today. His wife, Jane, was an Asobis Indian. His sister, Rachel married John Minert, who was a Mohawk. Uh, so there's a lot of Native American heritage within the family. Then when my grandparents married, uh, my grandmother, who was Sadie Bush, uh, she was Seneca. Her great grandfathers and father and uncle was taken by Joseph Brandt, who was the Seneca during the Revolutionary War when they were doing the raids on Kingston. On the way back to Canada, he traded the three boys to three different Native American nations. Um, the one boy, uh, the boys' names were Stephen, Cornelius and Isaac. Uh, Cornelius was only five when he was taken. They were not released until many, many years later. Uh, Stephen being released first, finding his brother uh, later, and Cornelius was the last to be found, uh, and by this time he was an adult. He had married um, a Seneca woman, and due to the treaties, he had to return back to the area. Wow, that's fascinating. And I didn't know you had so many tribes in your family. Oh, that's really fascinating. And they returned back to the area. Uh, both Stephen and Isaac moved back to the Buffalo area. Cornelius remained here. And uh, I found the documentation of the capture in all those stories. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Wow. Uh, I, as a young person, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents, um, learning the his family history, learning the beadwork, um, learning many recipes, cooking, and some of my summers were quite interesting. I always dreaded the first day going back to school because I knew a teacher was going to say, what did you do for your summer vacation? And somehow, uh, learning to tan hides didn't seem like something you'd write in a paper at that time. We were talking yesterday, you were talking about girl soup. Yes. Yes. That's, that's uh, quite different. You know? It is. And, uh, you know, these are things I learned to do over the summer. And uh, fortunately, there were enough other family outings and things that I could write about. So, uh, because up until really the six, late 60s, you really did not talk about Native American heritage. Uh, it was very discriminated against. In fact, it still is today. Well, it's, and you know, to be honest with you, so many families um, aren't able even to trace their Native American right. roots back. I mean, they they really can't trace it. It's very difficult because normally, if a Native American married a Dutch, an English, 
uh, you would find they would totally drop their own family heritage. They were baptized uh, and then married into the family. A local family would act as their sponsor for the ba baptism, and that would be the name that they would take on. Well, Shady, I just want to thank you for coming to talk about your family. And, you know, um, and Shady's here at the Kirsten House today with a lovely exhibit, so and you come all the time and help us. We appreciate it. Shady's part of the board of directors also, so, and thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.